If you are currently leveling up your Django skills with this tutorial, just to let you know, this tutorial is part of a free YouTube playlist, Django Database Structural Testing, where we learn how to set up and utilize PyTest for database structural testing within Django projects. If you like this tutorial and playlist, then also check out our Django Database RM Mastery course on Udemy. The link to the course and playlist should be found in the video description. Let's get back to building our test cases. In this tutorial, we're going to build a set of tests which is going to validate column relationships, ensuring that they are correctly defined within our specific model. Our current focus, the category model, we can see that it does have, I'm not too sure why that's there, it does have a foreign key, and that is the parent field. So we're going to create a set of tests to ensure that the category relationships, in this case, just this foreign key is correctly defined within the model. Let's jump back into our test file here, our test category.py. Let's create a new test function. We're going to call this test model structure. So just following the naming pattern that we have defined, and this is going to be relation relationships or relationship and let's go ahead well let's try and make this a little bit modular because we I say modular reusable in that we want to try and reuse this for other models so let's first of all set up some variables to define the model and field properties and then we'll go ahead and build some asserts something if you are interested in the theory of patterns and structuring and organizing your tests. AAA, Arrange, Act, Assert, or AAA, is a pattern that is widely used to structure and organize tests. It provides a, a clear and systematic way to write tests to break them down into three distinct sections. So first you arrange, so you prepare all the resources needed for the test. And then we act. So this is where we execute or invoke the specific behavior or operation that you want to test. And then finally you assert. So the assert phase or the last part of your function, your test function, you verify the outcomes of the operation or behavior to ensure that it behaves as expected. We have been, where possible, following this method, this pattern, throughout the tests that we've completed so far, we can identify in the previous test, for example, the arrange component or arrange phase. So here we're setting up the necessary preconditions, or in this case, the input for our test case. In our scenario for this particular structural testing phase, the act phase and the assert phase is a little bit blurred in some cases. The second phase, the act phase, typically we are calling methods or functions, executing operations, or maybe capturing outputs. As I mentioned, for structural testing, that isn't necessarily clear as if, for example, we would apply this AAA methods to unit testing. But I would say that the act phase is built in, if you like, into the parameterized mark in that we are preparing uh, and initializing the inputs for the test case, but we are also initializing, we are acting, we are executing, if you like, the category table in preparation to then utilize that model to test our test data against. Finally, the assert phase, here we're verifying the outcomes of our operation or behavior. So we have two asserts and they are essentially checking the expectations. So we have already set up our test data. We have, if you like, act, made an action. In this case, we have gathered the resources or the, the category model. That's really our action. And then we've tested our test data against the existing category or existing Django model. If you are new to testing and you are moving into the world of testing, it's well worth reading through as a starting point, the AAA pattern. There are several other patterns and principles commonly used in software testing to structure and organize test cases effectively. So these patterns will ultimately help ensure clarity, maintainability, and reliability of tests. So well worth checking out, like I said, if you have a bit of time.
Back to our test, let's finish this off. Now, remember what we're trying to do here is to make sure that our relationships that we have defined, in this case, in our category model, meet the expectations of our design. Now, just looking at the model here, there isn't necessarily many details specified. We know that the foreign key should be a field name parent. If we look at the key NL, so NL stands for null, so this should be a field that is a null field. And if we take a look at some additional documentation here, there isn't anything associated to the foreign key right here. However, we do know in Django that we do have to set up some mandatory attributes in order to correctly define a foreign key. So one of those attributes is to define the relationship between this field and the model that it's connected to. So in this case, you can see that the foreign key parent is actual, in actual fact a, a self-referring or a self-referential foreign key. So this is a concept in database design where a table's column references another column within the same table. If we take a look at some other tables, we can see that we have, for example, here, uh, we have a foreign key, which is going to be related to the product table. But in the category table, we have a self-referring key. If we look at the Django models, we can see that that is defined first when we define our foreign key. And you can see some other attributes that we had to define, for example, the on delete. What should happen when we delete a category which has other categories associated or connected to them? So what should we do with those categories that are connected to the category that we're trying to delete? So we have a few different options here. If you head over to the model field reference in the Django documentation, here I have control F or command F, and I've looked for the on underscore delete text, and then that takes me to the relationship fields, and then I can click on on delete, and then that should give me a nice list here of all the different options. So we have cascade, we have protect, restrict, uh, set null, set default, set. So a few different options here we have available and it's well worth just reading through that. So you're aware of all the different options should you be in a scenario whereby uh, an existing category is deleted, which is connected to other categories or other categories have a relationship to that uh, parent category, if you like. So it will be important that you set that up correctly. Otherwise you might find that you have data being deleted unintentionally. So here I've set it up with protect, which is an initial start whereby we cannot delete any categories should there be other categories connected to it via the foreign key. So we simply just cannot delete that category until all of the other categories which are connected to that category is deleted first. So that just prevents any data from being deleted. And you can see then we have some other attributes here. So null equals true and blank equals true. But we want to concentrate specifically on the foreign key mechanics. So we want to make sure that we have a test to ensure that this field is a foreign key, although we have already tested for that already. We want to make sure or we want to check what table or yeah, what table it's connected to or related to. And we want to make sure that we have the correct approach for when a category has its related category deleted. So that we can make this reusable Let's go ahead and create some variables to define the model and field properties that we want to test for. So we can utilize this for other tables really simply. So here we're going to be utilizing the model category. We have the field, uh, field name. So that's going to be parent. That's the foreign key field. We're going to set up the related, the related model. That's going to be in this case, uh, let's go category. And then we have the on delete behavior. 
So let's set this up. That's going to equal model dot protect. And yeah, I think that will do for now. We could also add the allow null and blank. We could do that at this point, although we do have a separate test to test for blank. Oh, sorry, to test for null fields. Now we want to make sure that we don't duplicate tests in our test suite. It's not generally considered ideal practice. So that does mean that we will need to plan our tests effectively to ensure that we don't duplicate any tests. Now, one of the main reasons why we don't want to duplicate tests is it just makes testing a little bit more difficult, specifically when we're debugging or troubling. When a test fails, it can be confusing to debug if there are multiple duplicate tests failing for the same reason. Or we might have duplicate tests and we, we might just change one of those tests slightly, but forget to change all the other tests. So it becomes hard to identify the root cause. Now, if we take a look at our existing tests, we have already checked and validated the existence of the expected column, in this case, the parent column and the data types. In this case, we'd find it as the foreign key. Now, you need to make a decision whether you want to potentially move this to the foreign key section because it is very specific to testing for foreign keys and I would be inclined to do exactly that because we couldn't necessarily say with conviction that in actual fact a foreign key is a data type and that's what this test is testing for remember the column and the data type whereas in this instance the foreign key isn't necessarily a, a data type the foreign key is a relational database concept and constraint that establishes a link between two tables. So I'm going to make the decision that in actual fact, this can be removed from the previous test so that we can test for it individually in the new test section, which is going to test for foreign keys and other relationships within a table. So let's go ahead and remove that. Now, it might be an actual fact that we have multiple foreign keys within our tables. Now, in our design, we don't necessarily have more than one foreign key within our tables, but the reality is that you may have. So it'd be well worth thinking about making this test a little bit more adaptive so that we can utilize it on multiple models. So let's utilize the same approach as we have previously. Now, we were going to create some variables at the start, which we could then change as per model. But I think maybe by utilizing the PyTest mark parameterize, that means it's just going to be a lot more easy to manage should we have multiple keys within our table. So let's utilize this approach. So in our test here, let's just bring that down and let's start to feed this information in. So field name, so this is going to be field field name. Uh, so we have same field name. So we have model field name. We're going to need the related the related model. So that's going to be in this case category, and then we can have the on delete behavior. Well, we have the the related model. Yep. Okay. So we have the on delete behavior. So that's going to be models protect. Uh, okay, models, models dot protect. Now that's models dot protect. So, okay. And then we also have the field type. So let's add that after field name. So let's go field type. So let's move that accordingly so we have model field name field type related model on delete behavior so by utilizing this pytest mark we can easily now add multiple for or test for multiple foreign keys or other keys potentially and in addition to that it makes it more reusable so that we can easily apply it to other tables as and when we need to. Now we can remove the variables we defined previously, and we can now move up to the top here. 
and we can now start to think about utilizing the asserts that we have previously assigned so we can reuse that code let me just bring that down so let's do that and we just need to bring in the parameters that we want to utilize within our tests so let's make sure we use a comma there we need a comma right there okay so expected type okay so that was the field type so let's call this expected type so field type now becomes expected type so let's test for that okay so we have one error has no attribute protect okay so this is probably a simple case of the fact that we need to make sure it's in capitals search so it should be pro tech not lowercase so let's try that again and we still have another error here so we have an assertion field is not type fields auto field okay um so that's in the test structure relationship so we have a problem here maybe we've not set this up correctly okay so we've defined the wrong field type so this is meant to be a, a foreign key okay so let's define that correctly so now we should work so we now have seven pass tests so far then we have created a new test to test the relationship fields inside of our specific model in this case the category model we've used the test mark parameterize again to set up our test data we pass that into our test function and we so far have asserted and tested for the field name to make sure that the foreign key field name is correct and to ensure that it is the expected data type so nothing new here we've simply just copied and pasted the code from the previous test so we now need to extend our asserts because we need to assert to ensure that the related model and the on delete behavior is correctly defined for our relationship so let's go ahead and create a new assert for this so first of all we want to check the related model so let's make sure that we get the the field now we have already collected the field individually like we did before so we collect the field and this time we look for the related model and that should equal the related model that we've defined in our test data in this case it should be uh, related model should be category the self-referring foreign key so related model there so with that done we can then go ahead and if you like add some a message for if the test fails which i said i wasn't going to do um okay so what we can do in actual fact is just make sure if we just add that back i will just quickly add something in there which you can copy from the source code so let's go ahead and add in some text for that so let's test to make sure that is correct so we have seven pass still okay and now we can make the last assertion for the on delete behavior so let's go ahead and do exactly that so we're going to assert this time we're going to look for field dot uh, remote the remote field dot on delete so on underscore delete so field dot remote field on delete that should equal the on delete behavior okay again i'll just add some additional text should the test fail completely optional and now we'll go ahead and test this out and there we go so just for your own sanity you can go ahead and maybe just change some of the items here in the model so let's just go for cascade instead of protect let's just test to make sure it fails it does so that's all good if we have a look at the actual reason why it failed uh, we can see here that it actually tells us 
a Assertion error parent field does not have on delete protect. Assert cascade. So we're told here that in actual fact uh, we have cascade, but we're actually testing for protect. We have, of course, set up our test data to assert for protect, but of course we changed the model to cascade. So we're just told that is the case. And that can give us some uh, an indication of what it is that we need to change in our test. Right, so let's just double check. I've, I think I've reverted that. Yep, so everything now is working as intended. So we've now tested for our single foreign key, in this case in our category table, and it looks like it has been set up correctly. Now we do have the null and blank attributes here, which you may also want to test for. Now it's up to you whether you want to set all of the foreign key or relationship test within a, a section of your tests or whether you want to break these out into individual tests. So I'm going to take the route of testing for the relationships and all the attributes that are expected within a single test. And so I'm going to differentiate the existing fields from the relationship fields within my tests. So going back to the code, that will mean for me to extend the expected data that we pass in, because now what we want to add is the allow, or we want to check for null values. So let's, um, let's change this to allow null, and in addition to that, allow blank. So that way we have all of the related tests within one section. But we need to remember that when we do test for null and or blank uh, fields, that we're just testing for non-relation fields in our model. So with that done, we can now extend this a little bit further. Uh, let's go ahead and add the true and true. So both should be true. Allow null true, allow blank true. So now we can go ahead and check for that. So we can create a new assertion here. Zoom in, create a new assertion. So let's now assert. Uh, this time we're going to check if the fields allow null values. So we've got our field. So let's grab that. Dot null equals allow uh, null. Now we need to make sure we pass that in to our test function, of course. So let's uh, just uh, copy that into our test function. Okay, so that's in our test function now, so we can utilize that. So allow null, that's the first assertion. So let's just test to make sure that works. That works okay. You can obviously change that to false just to test a little bit of a sanity test if you like. Now, as per normal, I will just uh, paste in the text should the test fail. And then we go for the last assert, which is going to be for the blank values. So this is going to be field dot and then just blank. So that's going to equal allow blank. Okay, and we go ahead and I'll just copy in the text should it fail. So let's give that a go. And there we go. Now remember in our category model, we only have one foreign key, but of course, if we had multiple foreign keys, we could now go ahead and just copy this down, add the parameters that are, or attributes that are required and test for those additional keys. Now, in addition to that, remember there are different types of keys. We have foreign keys, one-to-one -one, and many-to-many -many relationships. So we're probably going to need to think about changing this test or making individual tests for individual types of relationships for further models. So if we take a look between the product and the 
product type table, we do have a many-to-many -many relationship between these two tables, although we do have a link table defined, we potentially want to set up a, a different range of tests to test for that particular relationship type. And that, like I said, might mean for us to create an additional uh, function, test function for that, rather than utilizing the foreign key test function we created. As it stands, I think we have a basic framework for testing a, in this case, foreign key in a model, which we can now roll out to other models as and when we're ready. Moving forward with this, we need to remember, document the fact that we're now, or we've now decided that any relationship field will be dealt with separately from the other fields that we have in our models.